Good afternoon, welcome to Magrath, the uh, Builder of Worlds. Uh, actually set up to play a game today, um, but I thought I'd give you a quick tour of some of my burrows and badger scenery. This is some of the urban scenery I've made over the last two years. So let's take a closer look at this table and some of the models and how they're made. When I started playing Burrows and Badgers, which is about two years ago now, 2018, I decided that obviously I'd have to have a whole new series of models, scenic pieces and the like. And this is some of what I've created. This is the urban scenery, mostly for the great city of Lunden. And they follow a definite aesthetic look. Everything is kind of designed to go together make it all tied together on the tabletop and also to try and not look like some of the other games that I've played or fancy playing in the future I didn't want it to look like Warhammer or Mordheim one day I'm going to make a table for Frostgrave and our school going to be snowy and stonework and we'll be completely different again so let's have a closer look at some of the buildings so this was the very first building I made for my Burrows and Badgers games and it very much set the tone for how everything else is going to look um, I want the buildings to be low rise, so I don't want lots of multiple stories. Although I've gone and added lots of buildings with multiple stories later. But this uh, end profile on the gable end became something that I've tried to stick to. This curved in roof has become quite important. You'll see most of these buildings have a similar kind of roof profile. And also I thought I'd try something different with this model as well. Because up until now, pretty much everything I've built has been foam core and cardboard and balsa wood. And I wanted to start making more use of high density polystyrene the pink stuff or the blue stuff actually now in the uk it's mostly gray and as you can see with this model uh, it now has a removable roof which is a feature of all of my models um, but the lower section of the model is made from high density polystyrene which means it's easier to sculpt and get decent texture on uh, and all the models are pretty much shaped like this funky shaped chimneys now and um, it, it provides its own challenges, of course, why I have chosen to design things, how the windows fit in and doors and that kind of thing. This is quite a nice little cottage just to start off with. To get me going, it set the tone for the other models, uh, and I kind of went from there, really. Let's have a look at something a bit bigger. Okay, so here we have the forge. Again, it's not a huge model, taller than the last one, but with this very distinctive shape on its gable end and its roof this one doesn't have a completely removable roof it has roof sections that come out and enable us to see inside the model and get our hands inside the model if you look carefully right down the back if i take off the panel on the other side hang on you'll see there's a bed just down here near the fireplace um but I don't. I try not to over clutter the models with lots and lots of scenic features because you can't put figures in them. Um, the round the front of this model, then you'll see if you watched my previous, my recent video about Mantic Terrain Crate, you'll see that this one, the forge is built on the Mantic Terrain Crates forge from Terrain Crate One, a huge forge at the back, and an anvil on a stump, a really nice set of tools. The bucket here with charcoal in. Uh, is an old Games Workshop feature from their Siege set. So again, nice effective little model. Um, and it helps you start building characters. I then had to go away and decide who was going to be the blacksmith, that kind of thing, which is quite good fun. Here we have a, a large building, a larger cottage now, you can see. Still got the distinctive roof shape, and the, the top half of this roof will come off. We'll be able to look at that in a minute. You'll also notice this one's got a back garden allotment. This is... Um, a separate model piece it wasn't actually made for this it was made to go with this model right here but it works very well on this model too so I very much like it um, thank all the railway model companies for all the different bits of foliage and bits and pieces we've got elderberries and raspberries and uh, cabbages of different kinds and pumpkins I have no idea if they all grow at the same time and all in season but they look pretty cool so having an allotment out the back of this house is quite a nice way of breaking up um, urban terrain uh, gives you some definite cover and things to move through makes it more interesting without having to build another house kind of cheating really right let's have a closer look at this building 
So this is cottage is also a shop. And really decided what it is. It's kind of like a bit of a general store, but it's got a, a medieval front shop. So we've got the fold down and fold up shutters that would close up the front of the, the building um, that it makes the, the bench outside the front of the shop. As you can see, I haven't decided what the shop is, so I haven't painted on the shop sign yet. Real <laughs> slacker. Um, and this model, like others, you have access to get inside it, and in this case, the whole roof is pretty tight because it's a hot day. But the whole roof comes away, and you can see inside. Um, fireplace, again, made of high-density um, polystyrene all in one piece and the loft space so there's plenty of room inside this model um, for figures to get inside it if you like uh, sometimes some players will be very rude and just run characters through doors front to back and other times they're very concerned about whether the, the dweller is there or not But um, and then on the back of it if it's not attached to that little allotment it's still got its own little pumpkin patch and plants growing up the back side of the, the building and nice little touches like this log and spade out the back um, just add that extra bit of character don't get in the way of playing the game but make it the whole thing that much more interesting to look at well now here we go a little bit more upmarket i wanted a merchant's house something a bit posher than just the cottages um, more stonework to show off some wealth and a chance to play around with more high density polystyrene so let's go down here and take a closer look the model is based around uh, let's take off all of this bit here for a start. The bottom part of the model is uh, all two inch thick high density polystyrene, um, which I was able to cut the staircase into. The staircase is a compromised staircase. Staircase is always problematic for me in, on wargaming terrain, whether they should look completely realistic um, or whether they should be uh, enough for figures to be able to stand on. And I've gone for more realistic looking stairs uh, in this game, these buildings, but not entirely. We've got one lower room. You can see there's a window that goes right through. That's uh, an old Mordheim window, if I remember rightly. And inside you'll see, again, some Mantic scenic features. There's a fireplace down here with a fire and a grate. And also quite a nice Mantic bookshelf. Um, the door goes all the way through to this door and uncharacteristically i haven't bothered putting the detail in you can't get to that tunnel there and the little storerooms there you have to draw the line somewhere don't you really so on top of this level then we add the next bit which is a, again a this is a high density foam base with a foam core top and balsa wood and windows again from mordheim buildings i think Balsa wood floor inside. I haven't bothered modelling stairs or ladders or anything down to the lower section because it actually just gets in the way. And the, the building isn't that large. But what we get here, this one fits around the chimney quite snugly. Holds that in place. But again, we can have figures in here straight in from the door from the street. And then I wanted an upstairs section. Again, nothing too over the top. I certainly could put furniture in this because now i've got some cool stuff from mantic terrain crate too here we are there's the roof section on the top and that's the one that comes with also the wooden columns and the braziers on the outside the braziers come from mantic terrain crate one but you can see this one here i had as i've said before the plastic and in that set was pretty poor um, and the brazier is on a stand. I removed the stand and put it onto a cocktail stick stand instead, which stands much better. But quite a nice model, pretty cool. I like this one again, it makes up nice areas of the town. You get some different heights, characters are able to get them downstairs and get above each other. Helps to make alleyways dodgy happenings one way or another down the back of that. So. Okay, this is a more recent addition to the collection. I wanted this to be a large house. In town or either that the home of a, a wealthy farmer it could be either it's fresh fruit and vegetables uh, outside on a, a shop here and then round the back again I'm into wood piles everywhere should have a wood pile if you're gonna have chimneys and we have the back door two windows and a doorway here all the doors 
come out of these models. And this was actually the one that was designed to have the allotment on the back of. There we go, that works quite nicely too. The allotment is also designed to have an extra bit of Citadel wall dropped into it and it can be completely freestanding then as well. Voila, which works quite nicely and then it becomes its own piece of scenery, its own right, it's got a gate down here anyway and that works quite nicely too. Anyway, back to the building. So the whole top section of this building, all the roof comes off all in one go. And you can see inside it's one large building space. I could have put extra rooms in there and bits and pieces. I might even be tempted to put a, a uh, dividing wall in at some point. But I want maximum playability out of these games. You can also, on this one, see the inside structure of the roof. The, the end sections are made of foam core, foam board. Uh, and so are the beams and in this case here that looks like breakfast cereal from Lidl's has made the actual roof itself all of my buildings like this have individual tiles on these are all all these shingles or tiles or individually cut piece of cardboard which is a faff and it takes ages and I moan about it every time I do it but actually it's by far the most effective way of getting a really cool and unique structure and doing it this way too you can get some nice you can just about see the buckles and bends in the roof here it's not a dead smooth thing uh, and that i think has got a little bit more old worldy ancient looking uh, as opposed to a lot of stuff that you get nowadays which is just far too neat as far as i'm concerned um so that's the farmhouse uh, or larger townhouse if you like over the back here you can see the sun in splendor sometimes it's called the rising sun i haven't really decided um that's uh, a tavern i'm not going to go into a great deal of detail here with that i love this model it comes apart in multiple pieces but i'm going to do a video just about taverns and inns that i've made because i think i've got a bit of a habit i appear to have made quite a few taverns and inns for different games so i'm going to get them all out and put them on the table all in one go but as a quick sneak preview i suppose the roofs lift off they also have separate pieces. We can get right inside here. Three separate pieces of roof. And all equipped inside. Again with Mantic drain. There's another forge there, which is the main fireplace for the kitchen. And we've got a bar fireplaces at each end and a busy kitchen there too and then a backyard as well so we'll have a closer look at that when i do magrathia builder of taverns in a few weeks time So there you have it, that's part of my urban setup for Burrows and Badgers. I'm gonna come back to this. I've got other things to have a closer look at at some point. There's the graveyard over there in the distance for start and two or three other larger buildings that aren't on this table today. But I'm actually gonna get a game in. This is gonna be the first game I've actually played with another human being um, since the middle of March. Uh, now it's the middle of July. So from that point of view, you'll have to forgive me, but. I haven't finished writing up the, the Warband roster sheet yet, so I've got to crack on. So make sure you come back and see me again on Magrathia Builder Worlds. Do subscribe to my channel, that'll be really cool. And find us on Facebook as well, at Magrathia Models. There are um, albums for each one of these models on my Facebook page that has details of how they're all built too. So I'll see you again. Bye.